About 20 minutes later, I was scrambling to get my barding back on, while at the same time trying to finish drying my mane after a frantic shower. Aura's test, as she called it, proved to be something I desperately needed and was quite a lot of fun, at least for the small amount of time we had. We had just finished up what could have been a much longer bit of fun, when my mother's voice, along with Stormy's, came from the front door. Two of us scrambled to shower off the evidence of what we'd been doing, Aura giggling like a filly the whole time, while my mother, goddesses above, my fucking mother, knocked over and over again, asking if everything was okay, and that she'd be coming in if we didn't answer. I felt like a young fool trying to push her buck friend out of the window at the middle of the night after he snuck in for, well, I'm sure for anyone's imagination could go from there. I'll be out in a minute, I yelled. I slipped on the floor. I got up again and bumped into Aura, who also fell down as she tried to dry her mane. Sadly, Mom and Stormy had enough of waiting for us, and they both came into the main room where Aura and I were both laying, tangled up in each other's legs, wings, and towels. Two older mares looked at both of us. Then Stormy's grin grew from ear to ear as she said, So, this is how silly I looked when I was a teenager. No wonder my mother was laughing so hard. Mom just rolled her eyes. Really? You'd think the two of you would have more to worry about. Now get up and hurry up. We are ready to start and we don't have time for either of your foolishness. I blushed hard and I finally managed to figure out which hooves were mine and which were Aura's and got up. All right, sorry about that. Mom just shook her head and turned away. You're too much like your father, I swear to the goddesses. Aura laughed. Now that's a story I have to hear when I see Nightshade again. Oh, Nightshade was quite the play pony when he was young. That's why Grimm didn't like him much back in the day, Stormy said. She winked at me and said quieter. So I was personally said it was a good job. If I was just a few years younger, but sadly there's no time to reverse my aging right now. Ignoring Stormy, Mom said, Aura, I need you to go to the lab and help Callus with the last task. Shadow, get that barding off, please. It will make what I have to do harder. But I just put it on! I complained, but did as she asked. I still say you should bring a weapon or two, though, Aura said. Never know what might happen. Mom just sighed. We don't have time to argue, so you carry her weapons, or bags, or both, for her, please. No problem, she said, picking up my saddlebags and placing them on my barding, and weapons into them. See you in a few. Mom turned to look at me again, some of her frustration gone now. Okay, first I want you to put this on, she said, giving me a horn ring that reminded me a lot of the one Squirrel and Moose had given me a few weeks back. Once that's on, I can tell you more about what we're doing. I did, and felt a stabbing pain in my horn. I winced and almost fell down. Then I noticed the feeling of Aquila's presence vanish from my mind. What the hell was that? It's a high ward mind blocker. It'll keep what we're saying away from Aquila for a few minutes. Just enough time for us to tell you what to expect. She said, then looked over at Stormy. She'll explain. Stormy cleared her throat, then said, About a week ago, Aquila attacked your mother and friends at Frosty Summit. During this time, she had the full use of your body. She came up with a plan herself to get full control over her own body. She gave Grimm a set of instructions to follow, and said that if she didn't do as you said, that she'd kill everyone and make sure that your life was nothing but pain and misery. She then gave her a rag with your blood on it. Wait, so you mean this whole plan isn't yours? It's Aquila's? I yelled. Mom cleared her throat. Most of it, yes. But the problem with creatures like Aquila, they think that if they are threatened, or threatening, that they'll get what they want. Not knowing that a pony like me is smarter than she is. I changed her plan a great deal. That's why I haven't been able to say much to you about what we're doing. All of your friends know what's happening, and what I've done. So you're going to betray Aquila and risk her wrath? And why'd she give me my blood? 
I asked, feeling anger building up inside of me. Stormy answered. First of all, yes and no. We're doing what she wants us to do. Just with a twist at the end, that will make sure she can't hurt anyone ever again. As for the second part, you all understand that when we're in the lab. For now, let's just say that your DNA was needed to make some of this work. Now come along. It's time to get this started. She turned to leave, but I didn't move. Instead, I growled. I don't trust either of you. How do I know this isn't some bigger plan to get what you want from Falling Shadows? How do I know that you haven't been lying to me this whole time? Mom sighed, then pulled me into a hug. Not letting me get another word out. Because Aura and Vervain have made sure that if I lie to you or them, that my life will end. Their plan, which I'm not allowed to know anything about, will make sure that nothing bad will happen to you. If you can't fully trust me, Shadow, then please trust them and your uncle. It took me a moment, but I finally said, Fine. But please tell me this will work. If it doesn't, she'll kill all of us for doing this to her. Mom pulled away, then said, Even if we do everything she asked, Aquila would still kill us. She's evil. That's what creatures like her do. They kill. Now are you ready to start this? I sighed again, then nodded. Let's go. Stormy started walking again, and we followed. It took us a few minutes to go down the stairs across from the main chamber of the Ministry, and to the labs where they made sense. From there, we found ourselves in a large lab. My eyes widened at what Mom and Uncle, and possibly more, had set up. The entire large room had been cleared out of any equipment that would have normally been in this place. Painted in expertly drawn red paint were magic circles, zebra glyphs, and other things I didn't even know of. The two biggest circles, with the most complicated designs on them, were right next to each other. One of them had something standing in the middle of it, covered with a white sheet. Shadow, go and stand in the middle of the empty circle, Mom said, walking over to the other one. I did, but watching her, I asked, What's under there? In answer, Mom pulled the sheet off and I almost fell from shock as I laid my eyes on... myself. The blank-facing mare was the same height as me, only with a silvery white coat and a jet black mane. Her half-open eyes were the same shade of red as my own, and her horn was sharper than most unicorns, just like mine. Though, she had no cutie mark, and it looked like a corpse standing up. I gasped, asking, Is that a clone? Stormy looked offended. Heavens no! It's the best Gen 3 synth I've ever created. That's why your DNA was needed. That way we could create a body as close to yours as possible. The only difference between this and you is the chip in its head. But right now it's not activated because the brain inside of it has no programming. But the synth looks so lifelike. And why is it opposite my own coloring? I asked. To my surprise, a shadow pulled away from the far wall. My uncle materialized at the edge of the magic circles. And that's how DNA programming decided to make this synth. I'm guessing it's because that's your normal coloring? I got not but smile as I saw him. Hey, Uncle Ori. He smiled back before Mom said, He's right, though I'm not sure why your coloring changed since you were young. I'm guessing it's the memories of stuff I've forgotten. I remembered, however, I'd seen the change from my own memories and from one of Mom's orbs. Unfortunately, it wasn't one of the ones that I'd given to her. When I left the underground bunker, she'd set up her memories in. I nodded to her. I'd forgotten. When Aquila purified my body with that dark magic, it exploded out of me and my colors were changed. Though when Aquila takes over, my body reverts to looking like that. I said, pointing at the synth me which was still creepy, to be honest. I figured as much, Mom said before looking back at her brother. Ori, when this process starts, you're going to have to be in the observation room. The spell's going to cast is on the darker side of my magic, as you know. Not sure what'll happen if you close. He nodded. I figured that might be a problem. Wait, why should it matter if Uncle Ori's in the room or not? I asked. Stormy answered. Your uncle is made up of shadow magic, which is a branch of dark magic. From what he's told me, it takes a lot of his willpower to keep his mind clear and in control of his power. 
with a spell as powerful as the one we're about to use, there's a good chance he'll lose control and try to take the power for himself. Horticellus cleared his throat, saying, And the black book that you had was written by the witch doctor who trained the creature I pulled my power from. He was a powerful and evil zoni. With the close relationship I have to this darkness, it will be even harder for me to hold back my power from trying to take what I can. I felt a twinge of sadness hearing that. New Orichalis had a hard time keeping the speck of light he had still inside of him from going out for good. He'd been working hard to do better since he found out who I was, but still he had moments I'd seen myself for his wanting to help me conflict with his darker side. Like when he tried to kill Stardust in Stable 97, even after he'd gotten his memories back. He didn't trust my friend and said that killing him was safer than risking him attacking me. He'd done a lot of evil things himself over the years, and that's why I wanted to help him find the light again, so he could make up for what he'd done. Like I knew he wanted to. I understand, I said. Just be close by so you can help if anything's needed, okay? He smiled back at me again, then nodded. I have sworn to protect you, Star, and you have my word that I won't let anything happen to you. He hugged Mom, then melted into shadows again and vanished. Mom looked a little sad before she took a deep breath and looked over at me. Okay, Shadow, are you ready for this? Wait, where's Aura? I asked. I thought she was going to be here with me. Feeling my heart start to beat a little faster. A hiss came from the intercom, and I heard Aura's voice say, I'm here watching from the observation room with White Oak and your uncle. I'm here for you. I just can't be down there. That made me feel a little bit better. So I turned back to Mom and said, Okay, I'm ready. Mom took in a deep breath and said, All right, I want you to look right into the eyes of the synth. Once you have, I'll start the spell. You can't look away no matter what you feel or hear, not until I say otherwise. This spell might and will probably hurt. I'm going to be ripping another creature's soul out of you and placing it into the synth. Just be brave, and this will be over as quickly as I can make it. I nodded and did as she asked. Once I had, she walked over to the synth and placed a necklace around it. The necklace had a pendant with a zebra glyph on it. She then put something like it on the horn of the synth, then four bands around its legs. The last thing she did was connect all of them with a glowing chain that she made with her magic. As she did, I kept my eyes on the red ones across from me taking in deep, easy breaths, preparing for what would happen next. Mom came over to me, placed a single choker around my neck, then cast a small spell on me that connected the horn ring to the choker. Once that was finished, she went back to the edge of the circle. I could just make her out as she pulled out the old leather-bound black book and opened it from the floor. She turned the pages until she was almost halfway through it, then said, Okay, Stormy, it's time for you to leave, too. Are you sure you can hold her once she's in the synth? Stormy asked, sounding worried for the first time I had heard from the short mare. And the spells in these are the strongest of any zebra has ever made to hold a star spawn. It'll work. Trust me, Mom said. Okay, Grim, I'll be in the room if you need anything, he said. Then I heard the door to the lab open and then close. Mom took in another deep breath and said, Starting now, Shadow, prepare yourself. It took in another deep breath. Then I heard her start to chant in a deep tone. The words had to be an ancient zebra from what I could tell. I'd heard Yaksha and Sheena speak zebra before, but it was nothing like this. As she chanted, the lights in the room grew dim. A slight breeze started to flow through the room. Then the magic circles around the lab started to glow, a sickly purple light. They all came to life one by one until the two glyphs the synths had were standing in finally lit up. As soon as they did, pain like I'd never felt before in my life exploded in my body. It was like some pony was trying to pour molten lead into my soul. To make matters worse, I had heard her for the first time in weeks. The evil laugh of Aquila. <laughs> it's about time she did what I told her to. Oh, Shadow Star. 
I can't wait for you to see what I have planned for you now, Aquila said as she felt every part of her presence flow through me. I wanted to scream, but something about the spell was making it impossible for me to do so. I couldn't even move my eyes as I felt the power she really had flow into every part of me. I'd known that Aquila was powerful and dangerous. I had no idea how much, till I felt everything. Her energy was flowing out of me and towards the body across from me. That's right. You can feel what I've always had all this time, can't you? I've never let you see or feel everything I have inside of me before. I've only let you have a taste. About 30% of it in the past. Now watch as I show every pony how foolish they are for thinking they can beat me. She said, laughing again. A vision was starting to go black as she laughed. Then I felt my mind sink into a place I'd never been to before. In a matter of seconds, the pain was gone and I was in a black, deep void inside my mind. Looking at a white filly with kind pinkish eyes, smiling up at me. In the distance, I could just make out Aquila laughing still and taunting me. But it was like she couldn't tell what happened. I looked down at the filly and asked, Who are you? The filly smiled. It hasn't been that long since we met Shadow. I'm the light side of Aquila. My eyes went wide as I looked at her. I don't understand. The last time I saw you, you were more my side? What happened? Her smile fell a little. My darker half has been getting stronger over the past couple of weeks. She thinks I'm fully gone now, but I've been keeping myself hidden. My form you see now is the small amount of light that's left within us. She's killing you slowly, isn't she? I asked, feeling sorry for this better half of my inner demon. She's tried to, yes, but you can't ever fully destroy the light within any pony. My other half thinks she can, but I still remain, and I will forever. No matter how evil she tries to be, we are still a product of light and goodness, she said before sitting and saying, I don't have much time. Your mother's spell will pull me out of you with my other half, and I need you to let you know a few things before I'm gone. I wasn't sure if I could trust the small filly or not. Something deep inside me told me I should. So I sat too. Okay, what do I need to know? She smiled again. I want you to know that my other half knows what your mother is planning. You need to expect it not to work. And there is more to us than you think. Same from what your mother thinks. She knows about what we are. So, when we are pulled into the new body, be prepared for anything. I nodded. I had a feeling something like that would happen. Also, in a moment you're going to get back every memory you've had of what happened to your body while she was controlling it. When you do, you'll understand more about what she's been planning and who's been working, she's been working with. She wanted to keep the memories from you forever, but I'm going to make sure you know everything. The only way you'll be able to save this land, Shadow. She said. Wait, she's been working with some pony? I asked. She nodded. A stallion from the Enclave. A pony who should have died a long time ago. He's been controlling the Enclave for 200 years from the Shadows. Is it Nightstalker? I asked. No, Absent Moon, who you all know as Night Stalker, is still trapped in the Crystal Empire. Well, his body is. His soul, I believe, moved on many years ago. Same for the griffin he loved. She replied. So their bodies are still in the Crystal Empire? How do you even know that? I asked. She sighed sadly. We know because Absent Moon and Greta were powerful souls within this land. They shined bright, and we could feel them even in our isolation. Probably because of the bond their two souls have. They're eternally bound to each other, and have been for 1,200 years. Wait. What? I asked. You mean like that story I keep hearing about the two griffins, or the pony and griffin, who loved each other so much they were bound to each other throughout their lives? The very same. Absent Moon's soul was once the soul of Moonlight. The mare you saw in the memory crystal? Greta's was the soul of Joff, her griffin life pond partner. I would tell you more of the story if I had time, but sadly I can't. The mare who knew the whole story was your distant grandmother, Minette. If you want the full story, you need to find her, she said. 
she's still alive? I asked. In a way, yes. You can still feel her life force in this world, but it's a scattered and broken one. We believe she is an alicorn, but we have no idea who she is. That was going to be the next thing I told you. You need to find Manette. Help her get her full memory back, and then she can help you take down Falling Shadows. She knows the project better than any pony, she said. I took in a deep breath, then said, Okay, that's a lot to take in, but I'll try. So if this other pony isn't Night Stalker, then who is he? Her face went dark as she said, Thunderlane. I felt my stomach turn as I heard that name. That can't be right. He was killed by Greta. And that's the story, yes. But he's still alive and a ghoul. I don't know how he survived, but he's been pulling the strings on what's going on at the Enclave. You'll need to take care of him to start taking down Falling Shadows, if you want to break the curse on your family. Do you understand me? She asked. I nodded. I do, but I'm still not sure what I'm going to do. I'm not that strong. She got back to her hooves and said, You're stronger than you think. Let me show you. Confused, I got up as well as she started walking deeper into the darkness. After a moment, we came to a shimmering wall with bright white light. Behind it, mixed with specks of black flowing through the light. My jaw opened as I saw an ocean of what looked like power flowing behind the glittering wall. I looked down at her and asked, What's that? That shadow is the magical power that I've been pulling away from you over the few years, and hiding from my darker half. She feeds off power like this, and has been trying to keep you weak as she grows strong. Over the past three months, you've been trapped or tapping into this power as you've grown in your magical ability. But I've been trying to keep you from using too much of it, that my other half doesn't find it. Once I'm gone, all of this will start flowing at once into you. When it does, you're going to start feeling a change in yourself. That's my last parting gift to you. I looked at the sea of raw magic for a moment, then asked, How much is that? She smiled a little. More than your distant grandfather Dwarfstar or Minette had combined. No, that can't be right. Twilight Sparkle and the princesses were the most powerful unicorns in Equestria. And this looks like more power than what they've had. Well, maybe not the princesses, I said. The princesses are a different case. They were alicorns. Twilight on the Hoof was a gifted magic user and worked hard to get where she was when she grew older. You were born with this magic, just like Moonlight was. Just be prepared when it hits you. You will have a hard time using magic for a while, while your body gets used to this power. But you'll need it if you want to beat us. She said, trying to look at me again. Is it enough to win? I asked. Sadly, no. But I have faith that you'll find a way to bring the light back to us. Your special talent, she said with a chuckle. Then her body slowly started to fade. Wait, what do you mean about my special talent? I, I don't understand. I yelled. With her last words, she said, you'll have to figure out the rest from your own. I can no longer help you. One's true talent needs to be found by the self, not by the rest. Be strong, Shadow Star, and always remember to shine brighter than any pony before. With that, she was gone. Before I could even think about what she just told me, a flood of memories from Aquila was using my body slammed into me like a megaspell explosion. A moment later, I was ripped away and from the now crackling power of wall and thrust back into myself as Mom finished up her spell. I started to scream as I fell back into my body, the pain flowing through me. A white light was flowing from my body to the synth. I was still staring at it. I noticed that the dead look in its eyes were now starting to fill with the light of life body started to breathe slowly and a cutie mark was starting to show up on its formerly blank flank. As the last of the light that was Aquila left out my body, a boom that shook the room echoed out of the body and Aquila took her first breath of life. For a moment I thought she was going to attack us all, but she didn't. The rings mom had put on her glowed brighter 
she was stuck in place. Her eyes looked locked on mine as the spell made sure she couldn't do anything to me or the rest of us. Mom stopped chanting, and she said weakly, You can move now, Shadow. I finally pulled my eyes away from Aquila's and looked at her cutie mark. I figured that since she wasn't a real pony that she wouldn't have one. I was wrong. Stamped on her flanks, I saw a red flying eagle circling around a crown of thorns. The eagle's tail was longer than normal, almost like flames flung behind it, the beak nearly touching the tip of the tail. The crown was a mix of black and red, with a few drops of what looked like blood on the tips. I had no idea what it meant, but I could, couldn't be good. Release me from this binding spell, Grim. We had a deal, Aquila said, her muzzle barely opening, but her eyes looking to my mother. I turned my head weakly and saw Mom was breathing hard and lying on the ground. Her gray eyes looked over at us both. It looked like she had aged ten years in the past few minutes. Her mane was completely gray now, whereas before she had a few streaks of silver left in it. She looked weak, like most of her life had been stolen from her with one spell. Even with all that, she still managed to smile. Aquila, I learned a long time ago, never make a deal with a devil, she said as she slowly got to her hooves. I wasn't going to let a star spawn like yourself free in Equestria. Even the weaker versions of your kind cause enough havoc as it is. You'll be trapped like that until we can kill you. I tried to t walk towards Mother, but as soon as my hoof left the floor, I collapsed. My body felt weak and shaky. I tried to get back up, but couldn't. I looked over at Mom, saying weakly, My body's weak. She looked over at me, and I saw something in her eyes for just a moment, almost like she had no idea who I was. The woman passed, and she shook her head, saying, That will pass, Morningst. I mean, Shadow. Just give it a moment. I just laid there, looking over at Aquila in her own body, then said, How do you like being tricked for a change? Her eyes looked down at me, but instead of getting angry, she smiled. Feeling weak, are you, Shadow? Ah, oh, bite me. You lost. Get over it. I said, starting to feel some energy coming back to me. The door to the lab opened before Aquila could say more, and Ori Callus, White Oak, Stormy, and Aura came running in. Aura came right over to me and helped me stand up. You okay, Shadow? I'll live. Just help me get over to my mom, and somebody please do something with Aquila. I think she's trying to pull one over on us, I said as I got up. My uncle started walking towards Aquila, who just stood there with that smile planted on her face. She can't break free of those traps, Star. It's the strongest trap for a star spawn, Orikala said as he walked by. I made it myself using stones that had been specifically enchanted for creatures like her. Those can keep her like that for years. Once we move her to the prison we made, she'll have even more enchantments to keep her held down. Mom said as she leaned against Stormy for support. Aura just got me to the edge of the magic circles when an explosion of pain hit me. First in my head, as that barrier the other Aquila told me about crackled, shattered, flooding my mind and body with way too much power. Second, something was wrong with my chest. It felt like someone was jamming a dagger into my heart. My heart rate went up, and every thumb felt like it was trying to escape my chest. It was like it did in my memories of when I was a foal. My legs went out as I screamed, my vision going red. Every sound went silent apart from the ear-splitting sound coming from my muzzle. I tasted blood and smelt copper. I felt Aura trying to hold on to me as my legs kicked. My world became nothing but pure agony. Then, just as fast as it hit me, the pain was gone, leaving me shivering and weak next to Aura and my uncle, the rest looking over at me with concern. Aura was stroking my mane with a hoof, saying, Shadow, what's wrong? Talk to me. I said weakly, My head hurts. My chest hurts. Mom walked towards me slowly and cast a spell I remembered when I was young. A white light flowed over my body. Then she said, I don't understand. Her heart should have been fine after Aquila took away the darkness. Oricalus whipped his head around to glare at Aura, or Aquila, who started laughing. What did you do to her? 
Aquila looked his way and winked. Who? Me? Nothing at all. Her heart's just damaged from years of being attacked by that spell you cast on her Oricalus. Don't go blaming me for what you did to her when she was little. When I was in her body, I used my power to keep her heart strong. But now that I'm no longer in her pathetic mind anymore, her heart can't take the strain for it much longer. You're lying, Oricalus said as he started to walk towards her. Oh, I'm not lying at all. I never lie. I might bend the truth now and then, but I'm always honest, she said as her eyes locked onto mine. You'll be dead in a few days, Shadow. Let's call it a parting gift from me to you. Stormy spoke up with a light chuckle in her voice. A damaged heart is something we can easily fix here. You'd be surprised how far our synth technology has grown over the past few decades. Aura and I both looked over at the small mare as Aura asked, You can fix her? She smiled wider, then nodded. Easily. My uncle started to laugh as the look on Aquila's face went from pleased to angry. Looks like you're all out of tricks, Starspawn. Mom weakly came over to me and started casting spells over me. I was going to ask what she was doing, then I felt some energy coming back to my body. My head kept throbbing from the power I could still feel flowing into me from the vast pool the good a half Aquila had hidden away for so long. But I could deal with that. When she was done, Mom said, Let's move her to the prison. This monster can live out what's left of her life chained up like a dog. Come on, Shadow. Let's get you into bed so you can rest up. You have a few more things to take care of, then we can start figuring out how we're going to get home. Aura said as she helped me up. Okay, I think I need a nap anyway. And I have some things to tell you, Anuricalis, I said. My uncle looked back at me, smiling. I'll come help you then, unless I'm still needed by my sister. She waved him off. You go, we'll deal with her on our own. This binding spell is too powerful even for her. Yes, and I'd like a few words with you as well, Shadow, White Oak said. Whatever I was about to say was cut off by the insane laugh of Aquila. We all looked at her, and a moment later she said, I still find it funny that you all think this binding spell can hold something like me. You can't talk your way out of that, Aquila. You're trapped. Now get used to it. Oh, poor, poor Grim. You're still under the impression that I'm a star spawn, aren't you? Aquila said. As she spoke, a large crack appeared in the middle of the talisman around her horn. Let me educate you on what I really am. You see, the zebras like to classify all creatures created by the stars as star spawn. That's because that's what they are, Mom said, sounding bored. I've studied your kind for many years. The grin on Aquila's face got bigger as she said. Sadly, the zebras never looked at the differences between what I am and a mostly mindless star spawn. All star spawns are just creatures created by dark stars to cause problems for the ponies and zebras here on Equus. Now, a star born, or a, also a child of the stars, which is created by light magic users, like my creators were, are something else entirely. A surge of power exploded out of Aquila, and the talismans around her body crumbled away the dust. She moved her body's new neck, Popping the joints as she made a sound of utter delight, Mom and the rest of us took a step back as what had happened hit home. Aquila opened her eyes and started to cast a spell over her body. I thank you, Grim, for making this body for me. With some help, of course. It will do perfectly for what I need it for. Now I just need to make a few alterations. And before our very eyes, Aquila's new body was enveloped in a bright white and pink light. Her body started to glow, getting another head higher, her mane growing longer and starting to flow behind her like it was caught in a gentle wind. Dots of twinkling white lights danced around her mane like stars. Her horn grew longer and curved a little. Her eyes became slitted like a dragon's, and a small black ten-pointed star appeared just over her collarbone. When the light of the spell pulled away, she looked nothing like me anymore. Her coat was even whiter than what mine used to look like, lacking the silvery shine. And when she spoke, her voice was richer. 
It feels wonderful to be myself for the first time in my life. It's now time for me to pay you all back for the misery you and your families have put me through. She said in a regal smile on her face. I am Aquila, daughter of the stars, and it's time for me to cleanse this world of the stain of ponykind for good. And I'm starting with you, Shadow. Mom and Stormy both tried to cast a spell at her, but she just blocked it with ease. Then she surrounded us all in a pink glow and in a flash of light. We were all teleported out of the mystery, ministry. Footnote. Level up. New perk added. Mage, rank one. Congrats on getting all that stored magic of yours back. Good for you. Upon attaining said magic, you've gained the ability to learn more spells, and now you'll be able to learn them with more ease than before, without supernatural entities getting in your way. Just be careful, and have fun.